Hello, my name is Edward Chavez. I'm a justice on the New Mexico Supreme Court and the court's member on the Lawyer Succession and Transition Committee. The goal of, of the Supreme Court in setting up this committee is to address issues that deal with the incapacity or disabled or aging lawyers. Over one third of our lawyers and judges are over the age of 55 years. And the reality is that as we get older, we are more susceptible to cognitive impairment or other disease disorders like cancer or heart attacks or strokes. And the goal of the Supreme Court is to make sure that we help judges and lawyers deal with the complexity of these medical issues, while at the same time helping them to preserve their favorable reputations and dignity while protecting the public. The video you are about to see is intended to help you deal with those people that you care about, whether they're a family member, a significant other, a close friend, a colleague, or just somebody in the legal community who you have noticed have had mood changes or behavioral changes, things that might ask you uh, to ask yourself, should I be concerned? Are these signs or symptoms of more serious problems? Is there something I can do? If so, what can I do? This video is intended to help answer those questions. We have two experts that will help you. Dr. Rex Swanda, who is a board certified neuropsychologist, and Dr. Don Fisher, who is board certified in occupational medicine. They will answer these questions and the bottom line is that your early intervention will make a difference. You may discover that the person you are concerned about can be treated medically or managed medically. And if they can't be, then you can help us help them to deal with the complexity of the medical issues while preserving their dignity and their reputation. Thank you for caring and thank you for watching this video. I hope that you find it helpful. Hi, I'm Dr. Don Fisher. This is Dr. Rex Swanda. We've been asked by the uh, Working Committee of the New Mexico Supreme Court to provide an overview of uh, observable signs of professional impairment. It's our intent today to um, help viewers um, understand a few things to take home in our messages. First of all, we'd like to help, uh, help you identify uh, warning signs and changes in behavior that might signal some kind of um, uh, impairment that needs assistance. Uh, we'd like to um, demonstrate uh, some of the barriers uh, that may occur to that, uh, intervening or seeking that kind of assistance. Uh, we'd also like to uh, share with you some resources that are available to you if uh, these issues come up. And lastly, we'd like to help you understand that, that uh, your role is not necessarily to figure out the cause or uh, corrective action for these uh, issues, but rather to uh, assist in identifying uh, problems in your profession. Dr. Swana, tell us uh, about uh, some of the common warning signs for these uh, behavioral impairment issues. Oh, sure. Yeah, so that really is the issue. How would a person know if a colleague uh, was having a serious problem that uh, they needed to bring to the attention of that person. Um, so uh, really what we're talking about are significant changes in behavior that are accompanied by poor insight or lack of awareness. And that lack of insight is the critical feature here. Obviously if a person has good insight then uh, and ability to perceive themselves the way others see them, then that person can self-monitor and make changes, fix the problem, probably before anyone else recognizes it. And, uh, and they can seek out assistance on their own without anyone coming to them. So we're talking about folks who lack that insight. And, um, and so some of the changes and uh, problematic behavioral issues that you might see in a colleague could show up as changes in emotion. Uh, maybe more emotion with increased emotional volatility, quick temper, um, uncharacteristic displays of anger would be a tip off and that would you know, obviously be uh, concerning dis disruptive emotional changes. Um, you might also see less emotion with a person uncharacteristically appearing to be uh, less 
engaged, more empathetic, kind of listless. Um, I think the obvious changes that uh, an attorney might be very concerned about in a colleague would be uh, changes in professional behavior. For example, timeliness, uh, being chronically late for appointments when this hadn't been a problem in the past, uh, missing a hearing. <laughs> Obviously, that's not a good thing. Um, and declines in quality of the person's work. Um, the, uh, you know, you might see poorly written briefs or uh, missing details, uh, poor summations. Uh, a few of the other changes that might come to your awareness but uh, might be a little harder to pick up on would be any kind of psychosocial stressors, uh, changes in relationships, um, changes in financial problems, and um, those are um, always, of course, difficult to know if that could be a cause of some of the problems you might see at work or a consequence of the same cognitive impairment or other condition that's getting in the way of everything in the person's life. So, uh, Dr. Fisher, maybe you could tell us about some of the changes in a person's medical and physical status to watch for. Uh, right, right, uh, Dr. Swana. In addition to those behavioral observations that, that you can make, there are also um, physical observations that people may uh, manifest uh, that signal some kind of uh, ongoing uh, problem that would create these, these behaviors. For example, you could uh, observe uh, rapid weight gain or weight loss. Um, there may be uh, tremor. There may be uh, facial drooping, changes in coordination and dexterity, uh, changes in uh, balance and strength. Uh, these are uh, observable signs that there is some sort of condition going on. You don't know what, but, the, but there's uh, something going on that uh, may uh, signal a uh, problem. Yeah, you can see changes in uh, a person's um, uh, energy level, uh, their um, uh, interest in socialization, for example. Uh, you can um, see their general hygiene. Uh, they may have uh, gone from a, being a meticulous dresser to someone that uh, whose uh, glasses are askew. They may have spots on their clothing. Something that is an obvious change that you can you can see. Sometimes it uh, may manifest in, in complaints uh, rather than visual observations. People may start complaining more about their pain, their, their sleep disturbances, insomnia, or sleeping too much, headaches, nausea, um, and, and being overly focused on those things. Serious conditions such as blurred or double vision um, are um, uh, you know, particularly noteworthy. The biggest general uh, follow-up uh, and point to make in discussing this with, an, uh, with a colleague, though, would be to encourage them to go see their medical provider and get a general medical follow-up. And I think maybe you can speak to those issues, how that would be helpful. Well, in an ideal situation, you know, uh, most, most of us have a relationship with a primary care provider. And uh, typically, that's a situation where I have some trust. I pick that person to begin with, and they um, uh, have uh, some insight, uh, they have a background about me, at least from a medical, and often well, from primary care providers, they know something about my social situation as well. Uh, so they can uh, uh, objectively and independently look at um, my situation, uh, interview me, uh, they're trained to uh, look at medical conditions that can create these behavioral conditions. They can look at uh, uh, behavioral problems, psychosocial problems like anxiety, depression, dementia, for example, that would lead to these kind of behaviors. They're also grounded in substance abuse problems. So they're really a good uh, quarterback, really, to start the evaluation and uh, uh, make referrals and then, and then tie it all together. Um, in a less than a little bit less than ideal situation, if they don't have a primary provider, they can get one. Um, they can start with a new uh, person that can look at them objectively. It may require getting some prior medical records to understand what's been going on. Um, but uh, again, the, um, the 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 medical providers are good. Uh, place to start when someone has that insight and they're willing to, to take that next step. Dr. Swanda, how do, uh, does anybody know that they're uh, 
uh, normal or not? How do they know if they're impaired or not, rather than just being you know, some of the minor changes with age? Well, that's a, a great question. Uh, I find in our clinic a lot of people come in who are almost self-referred. They come into their physician worried, you know, Doc, I've had, um, I've been forgetting things. I go to the, you know, shopping and I forget things at the store. Um, the key thing is when that individual is the one who's doing the most worrying about themselves, that's probably less likely to be a serious condition like Alzheimer's. When I get more concerned is when the spouse or the family are pointing out problems of forgetting that the individual is not aware of mm -hmm. and seems totally unaware when it's brought to their attention. Some of the typical changes with uh, normal aging uh, would be, you know, kind of run-of-the-mill uh, forgetting of names of people that you know, people who are familiar. It's really frustrating for the person because they know the person and they know they should know the name. Um, the dementia side of that is running into someone you should know and having no idea who they are. Mm. So it's not just forgetting the name, but not even knowing who they are. So there's really no embarrassment. There's no insight mm. that they mm. should have known that person. Um, another example of normal aging might be misplacing a common object, a, a misplacing a wallet or a tool on the dementia side. Um, we're more concerned that when that person doesn't know how to use that tool anymore. Um, so there are a lot of examples like that. Um, forgetting items on a shopping list usually is just sort of normal memory problems of any age. <laughs> Frankly, we should write things down. Uh, not knowing that you went shopping at all or going shopping and getting lost on the way back uh, in a familiar area. That's the more uh, pathological concern. Uh, Dr. Schwanda, tell us about uh, some of the um, uh, barriers to um, intervention. Right. I think that's uh, one of the biggest points. Um, the biggest single barrier, I think, is our natural tendency uh, to um, cover up for someone, to uh, normalize and, uh, and really just um, assume that things are more normal than they might be. Uh, so what you might find a person doing in the category of enabling is uh, to gradually uh, pick up and cover for your colleague by uh, taking on a, oh, I'll, I'll pick up that case because uh, John's not feeling so well today or uh, over the past month he's going through a lot. But um, what I would recommend is for uh, someone who's concerned about a colleague to use the kind of resentment. As soon as you become aware that you're feeling a little resentful, pick up on that and, um, and ask yourself, so why is this colleague who used to be able to cover everything, why are they having difficulty? Um, why am I having to pick up more? Or why aren't they pulling their share in the, um, in the office? Um, a couple of other barriers uh, would be just simply making excuses for the person in the way of, well, he's under a lot of pressure, or she's going through some relationship issues, or I know there, there's some financial things going on, and, um, and so being a little too quick to just attribute uh, problems to something that you may not really have any, enough information to know about. So we're just really um, talking about asking questions in a helpful way, not in a gossipy way. And, uh, and trying to be alert to problems that the person might not have insight about. Dr. Schwanda, tell us, uh, give us some recommendations for, uh, and some resources for um, interventions and, and follow-up. Well, uh, once you've become aware that a colleague might be having some problems, I think the most respectful and important thing is to find a way to have a direct and private conversation with that individual. It's really the most ethical thing to do uh, because that really has the potential to help an individual with partial insight uh, take some steps to independently address the issues. Um, I think um, asking yourself, how would I want to be treated in that situation is a good guide. There are additional resources like the Lawyers and Judges Assistance Program and in a worst case scenario, the um, Disciplinary Board. 
Arshwana, give us uh, some take-home messages. Sure. I think the most important issue uh, for people who are concerned about a colleague's behavioral changes is first to recognize, does that person seem to have insight? Are they aware of the problems that are pretty obvious to you? And um, the uh, second p piece to recognize is that if that person has insight, they'll fix their problems on their own most likely. They won't need a lot of prodding from you. So if they're lacking insight, that's the time to intervene with a direct conversation with the person if you can. If you can't, um, then uh, whatever way you can find to recommend to that individual to follow up with a medical uh, workup and use that as a starting point is the best recommendation. If you can't have that direct conversation, if you can't get them to uh, see their physician, then that's the point when you probably need to follow up with the lawyer and judge's assistance program. Thanks, Dr. Swanda. Uh, we want to leave you with a few resources that we're going to show on a slide. Uh, thank you for your attention, and uh, good day or good evening. So, uh, John, I really appreciate you meeting with me. You know, it's like, but I have to say this is kind of a tough uh, discussion to have because I've been concerned. Um, you know, we've worked together for a long time, and I'm just seeing some uh, changes that I really don't know what to make of it. Uh, do you have any idea what I'm talking about? Mm, or, no, not really. I do what I always do. Well. What I was noticing is, you know, in the office, really going on over the past uh, couple months, um, I'm aware that uh, you've had, oh, you know, a few missed appointments, and we all do that, but it seems to be happening more regularly with you being late. Um, you know, what I'll, I'll tell you, though, what really brought this to a head, I got a call from an uh, opposing attorney uh, last week, and um, he was concerned. Um, and I, I don't think it was just, you know, I think he was being a good guy in calling. Uh, but he said that in, the, um, in that hearing that your arguments, yeah, it just wasn't put, to, put together very well. And uh, in fact, what he told me is that the judge actually um, had some words um, that he uh, found concerning. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, I yeah, know what you're talking about. I, uh, you know, we all make mistakes. That was just why I was really tired and didn't didn't have it all together. But uh, it's it's going to work itself out. Well, well, yeah, I hope so. I just you know I want to be uh, part of helping along that way if I can. Um, yeah, I told him I would talk to you. I, I'm also noticing your. I don't know. There's something going on with your hand, and I. You know, I had some family members, you know, that's not a bad thing, but um, I know there's some medical conditions that can cause, you know, some of those problems. Have you seen a doctor recently? Oh, I've had this for a while. It's, it's run in my family. It just gets worse when I don't sleep well or I'm stressed and it just, just happens. Have you... It doesn't interfere yeah. with my writing. I, yeah. Uh, have you seen a doctor about it? Mm -mm. No, no. Not yet. Yeah, I'd really recommend uh, getting an appointment. If it were me, I'd go see my doctor and see what's going on. Yeah, yeah maybe I should do that. Uh, do you have a doctor? Uh, yeah, I, I, there's somebody I've been going, I've gone to, and uh, not not recently. Uh, yeah, you know, it's kind of awkward. I I don't want to intrude, you know. So, um, but um, I'm wondering, could I be of help in? Uh, I don't know setting anything up or do you have someone to turn to for that? No, I can, I can call. Um, yeah, I can do that. Well, I, you know, I, um, I, I, I'm really hoping uh, that you could. How long do you think it would take you to get in to get an appointment with your doctor? 
depends on the doctor, but um, I, don't know, I, I can call in a couple of weeks. Maybe we could touch base uh, in in a couple of weeks and just yeah, I'm not interested in prying. I, I'm mostly just interested to make sure that you're not missing anything important because I know that most conditions uh, it's usually better to find out earlier than later. If you know, there are a lot of things that can be treated. Sure, sure. Yeah, I, yeah, I can do that. I, I appreciate your concern. Um, yeah, I'll give it a shot. So. You know, and I, I don't want to be heavy-handed, uh, but I did want to let you know when I when the attorney called me, um, I'm understanding that either the attorney or possibly the judge, um, they were talking afterward, and um, and I'm understanding that uh, they are actually considering talking to the disciplinary board. Oh, um, yeah, mm -hmm. and so. Well, um, yeah, I'd uh, rather handle this outside that. I'll. Uh, yeah. Well, sure. I'll call my doc. I'll see see what's going on. Yeah. I you know I told him you know I'd, I'd have a talk with you and uh, and if there's any way I can help you follow through on that and keep it low level, I think um, you know I want to be helpful to you. Well, uh, if you want, I appreciate your concern. Sure. Thanks. So, how how should we follow up? Oh, uh, I'll uh, I'll call my doc and. I'll let you know. Okay, maybe we could touch base in what, a couple of weeks. Or? Yeah, that sounds fine. Sure. Okay, I'll I'll talk to you or, or give me a call if you want to, and I'll I just want to help you with this. Okay. Well, thanks. Thank you. Okay. All right. There are additional resources like the Lawyers and Judges Assistance Program, and in a worst case scenario, the um, disciplinary board. Dr. Swanna, give us uh, some take-home messages. Sure. I think the most important issue uh, for people who are concerned about a colleague's behavioral changes is first to recognize, does that person seem to have insight? Are they aware of the problems that are pretty obvious to you? And um, the um, second p piece to recognize is that if that person has insight, they'll fix their problems on their own most likely. They won't need a lot of prodding from you. So if they're lacking insight, that's the time to intervene with a direct conversation with the person if you can. If you can't, um, then uh, whatever way you can find to recommend to that individual to follow up with a medical uh, workup and use that as a starting point is the best recommendation. If you can't have that direct conversation, if you can't get them to uh, see their physician, then that's the point when you probably need to follow up with the lawyer and judge's assistance program. Thanks, Dr. Swanda. Uh, we want to leave you with a few resources that we're going to show on a slide. Uh, thank you for your attention, and uh, good day or good evening.